And so I, I just want to kind of point people to the fact that you may have in your mind this idea of Christianity as this repressive Victorian era, you know, stopping us having any fun sexually. But actually, it's the opposite. Christianity helped people to flourish with its sexual ethic. And so I think that should just inform the way people now look at it. Um, yeah, we live in a very progressive liberal culture where lots of people feel like I just need to be able to free, be free to do my own thing. But if you look at the surveys, people aren't any more happy. In fact, they're far less um, satisfied with their sex lives today than they were in previous generations. And that should tell you something, that actually maybe there's something in this old fuddy-duddy Christian morality that should make us rethink whether just pushing on the freedom lever actually delivers the goods we think it will. Sometimes it's constraining our freedom that actually helps us to live more free lives. So it's interesting, isn't it? Because we're living in the wake of the, the sexual revolution, the 1960s. And, and with that has come, for a lot of people, I think they, they sense that this is a new era of freedom and you know the ability to choose for myself, who I sleep with, how I identify and everything else. The, the irony is that there, there's a wonderful thinker, I'm, I'm sure you've come across her, um, Louise Perry, whose mm. book, The Case Against the Sexual Revolution, has also pointed out all the ways in which the sexual revolution has actually not been great for people, especially women and children, that there's a lot of things about the loosening, if you like, of the, the Christian ethic on monogamy and marriage and so on has done to actually really uh, infect culture with, with a kind of this is attitude to, to, to relationships that, that's actually very negative for people um, because the the kind of where that ends up with is is tinder and with pornography you know that is just floating around the internet for everyone to see and with just these kind of very vapid unsatisfactory relationships so I'd want anyone who sort of feels that Christianity is somehow a straitjacket when it comes to its sexual ethics to say well what has the sexual revolution actually delivered us? You know, it's not all good in that sense. And you, and you have to take that seriously. Um, the other thing to say is that the sexual revolution of the 1960s was not the first sexual revolution. The first sexual revolution was the sexual revolution of the first century. When, because Greco-Roman culture was, was a very permissive culture, you know, there were, now it was different. It was the, the sexual relationships were sort of more, socioculturally and hierarchical in nature, but a Roman male could have sex with whoever he wanted, male or female. Um, th there was, in a sense, there, it was very liberal, you could say, but it was very bad for, for slaves and for women uh, and for children. Um, and it was Christians who, when they said, actually, we are going to constrain male sexuality, they changed the world when they did that, when they said, actually, it's really important that a man has one wife and is not able to simply divorce her just like that and uh, has to be faithful to her and is not gonna be able to sleep with the scullery maid or whoever uh, at his whim. That was a revolution. And it, it was one of the hardest things, I think, that the Christian church had to do then. It then became so part of our culture that we kind of forgot just how revolutionary it was and the incredibly positive impact it had. And, but you, you, you see sociologists talking about this today, the way in which by kind of creating what is essentially the family unit, it, it was incredibly beneficial to culture. It stopped essentially um, in the sort of um, cultures where polygamy is rife, the kind of the resources that got wasted because of a lot of young men who weren't able to find you know, wives and, and partners and so on because of the, 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 the situation. And, and there were just so many unexpected benefits to the Christian sexual ethic and the way it managed to create a flourishing culture economically, socially, uh, and so on. I'm hearing from more and more people who are just starting to question the whole underlying assumptions behind the sexual revolution that actually there are other ways of living your life that, as it turns out, can be quite beneficial for you, for culture, uh, and funnily enough, kind of are supported by traditional Christian ethical teaching on sexuality.